and welcome to the Margie and Lisa show. I'm Margie Wiggin. This is my co-host. Lisa Jackson. We're glad you can join us tonight. Yeah. We have three great subjects and the first one we're going to talk about is the Hopkinton Public School Music Department. Well, actually, um, <laughs> all the whole country is celebrating um, music right. in our schools month. So we're talking right, about music in our schools month because it's March and um, our own schools in Hopkinton obviously do this. So we have some information about that, but I have some um, national information. Yeah, start national and then we'll work on <laughs> it. Oh, all, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what I found was, and since 1985, um, March has been Music in Our Schools Month around the nation, um, sponsored by National Association for Music Education, That's and um, mm -hmm. need for benefits of quality music education programs. And this year's theme, they have a different theme each year, yeah. is Music Inspires. Right. Right. Is I thought that was great. Yeah, yeah, that's what I found yeah. too. And I was like, oh, it yeah. does. I mean, I've never been musical, but I have oh. a daughter that's very, very musical. Are you musical? My uh, my dad started singing when he was five uh, and he's at oh, age 89. He is still a professional uh, tenor. He's a, wow. he's a, yep. Concert. He went to Longy School of Music. He went to Oberlin College. He Conservatory, yeah. So, so did music is in our family. We all had to play an instrument. And what did you play? I, well, so I played <laughs> recorder, which I was really good at. <laughs> yeah, right. And then I thought violin would be cool, and I was terrible in third grade of violin. And then they put me into piano in fourth grade, yep. which I begrudgingly played until I was in ninth grade. And I, <laughs> that and was I a was, long haul. I could do it. I was good at it. I can read music. I actually led a junior choir at a church I worked at. But really, I'm a drummer. And my mother wouldn't let me take drum lessons. No kidding. Which I still haven't taken, but I talked to Phil Antoniades in yeah. town, and I might take um, you have to. drum lessons. And Craig Hay <laughs> said that he would teach me to drum for the summer band. That's awesome. So, so it's so coming it's back coming. to you. It's, it's coming. coming back to you. Yeah. So Not, music is near and dear to my heart. That's awesome. Yeah. Not musical. My Although my grandmother and my mom's side play the organ. Cool. That's and hard. You have you, to do feet and Yeah, dance yeah, and yeah. So we, I played with the organ. It sounded horrible. And then my daughter is in, she's in eighth grade, and she does four different bands. So she's um, doing, she plays trombone for the symphony and I guess they're going to be competing in Micah. Micah, yeah. And then she does the, the jazz band, band, concert band, and then um, pep band. Mm -hmm. So she does all those. And then her dad went to Berkeley School of Music. Oh, okay. So um, he got a degree in music science. Oh. And he actually wrote a symphony in his senior year of school. And we were lucky because he got free tickets to go to symphony. Cool. So I used to go to And I have a great appreciation for music. Yes. So it's... I tried piano, and all I could think about was riding my horse, and it just didn't, it didn't stick, you know. Well, I just didn't like to practice, because I had other things I needed well, to do. Well, yeah, me and my so, horse. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what I, I was it. thinking about, I too. So go ahead. What so else I'm just going to say, um, so this, this was written in 2014, um, talking about the voice. Your voice is essential to ensuring that music education remains integral part of scholastic yes. education. Because I know sometimes they've tried to cut things they consider extras. Yeah. You know, like, oh, we don't need music. But music is like another language. And it's math and it's, exactly. it's there's science. Research. I mean, there's yeah. there's things that connect uh, their synapses in the brain. All of that. There's yeah. research that shows that, you know, kids' brains really flourish on Vivaldi and Mozart and right. and, and that intricate um, interplay of notes and harmonies and, and rhythms. So um, music is really important, I think as you know not just because we have right. a great music program under Craig Hay and right. before that Steve Uvaro and and all the other um Jeremy Dodge and I'm probably forgetting somebody um but we have great instructors here right and they do a great <clears throat> thing and Micah is coming up when we compete with other schools which is it's pretty exciting I was surprised and Celia just got asked to be part of that symphony band and all that and I was like wow that's pretty good I mean I knew she you know she was doing well but I didn't know she was you know like getting so into it and I was yeah. like that's that's nice you know and our teachers are so progressive and they add a lot of music and it's always amazing to me I go to a lot of concerts obviously and they get so many kids together and they're able to get them to play and what they do is actually they play them in separate sections sure and then they bring them together yeah. on stage so it's really quite interesting Mm -hmm. how they coordinated it all and how amazing it sounds because Celia's been a, she started with the 
recorder in um, Elmwood. Second and third, yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, moved on to the P-bone, then the trombone and all that, so... The P-bone? Yeah, it's the... What is that? It's a plastic trombone. Oh, okay. So you don't have to spend the I money. I never heard of that. Yeah, it's, it was green, the color of your shirt. Uh-huh. She still has it, so oh, it was cool. funny. So that was her first. Uh-huh. And then a friend of ours actually found her a really nice trombone at a yard sale. So she plays that trombone now, so she's like, you know, but it's interesting. Perfect. Yeah, so she's um, she's really good, but it's been interesting to watch the progression. And I'm so impressed with the Hopkinton schools because, you know, like since Celia started to where she is in eighth grade, I just went to a concert last week, there'll be another concert tomorrow night, and I'm just amazed on how wonderful it sounds. I mean, not that they, you know. No, they do, they really, yeah, I feel like when I go to a musical or a drama performance, I yeah. feel like I could be in Boston right. seeing something. And the I didn't professionalism. Have to deal with, and, fabulous. Right, and the, 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 the teachers are amazing, and the yeah. students are so well composed, and, you know, like, they, they really, are very well organized, you know, and I'm, I'm so surprised and so impressed by them. Yep. If anybody's watching and um, has children yes. who are actively in the program, um, we'd love it if you give us a call and um, let us know what you think of the music program, if what your child is doing and how they've come up through the program. That would be yeah, great. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so... Anything more nationally? And then- nope, uh, that was just kind of an overview. And Excellent. then I know my own personal things. My oldest um, was a flautist, but also- <laughs> Is that what that's called? Yes, but also was asked to play piccolo because there were certain pieces where they would need a piccolo. Mr. Yavaro asked her if she would be a piccolo. Try it, and it's similar and, to yeah, the flute? Yeah, she was in the pep band, she was in the concert yep. band. She was, I don't think she was in the jazz band, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, it was a while ago. And then my son played trumpet, Yeah. but he, I guess that's uncomfortable for your face. Right. Or your mouth, or your something, right. or your cheeks. So I didn't realize how uncomfortable it was, and I just thought, yeah, he, he looked like a trumpet player. Yeah, and, you're you like know. you got this. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, and then my youngest played oboe, and again she did she did well, but you know music isn't her thing. She's more of a sports kid. Right. So that's funny. Yeah. Well, the pep band was fun, so I went to. Um, the Hockington football game against Holliston and oh, see cool. that was the first time Celia well she played in that pep band with the high schoolers yeah so that the eighth grade class was invited to play with the high schools earlier on in the year which was so exciting for them but yeah they were awesome like it, it really fell into line with the with the football game I felt like I was like at a Patriots game the the well, stadiums absolutely. were packed and absolutely. you know like the pep band was right yep. there and it was like I was like wow that is so impressive right. like and it just in the chorus, the singing, like also, ever oh, since yes. the kids have been little, the chorus has been amazing. Yep. And Celia did it a couple of years, but she's more into the the music playing. But it just right. And not just the music. I'm not just the bands, but we also have chorus. Sam says, let's not forget choral music, of course. Oh, thank Mrs. you, Mrs. Conant. That's the name yes. of the woman. And Mr. Brody, rock. Right. Um, yes, absolutely. My daughter was in the chorus as well. And it's huge. I yeah, mean, like it's when you beautiful. go see them in the in yeah. middle school, I mean, it, they cover the whole right. stage. And I have to say that my daughter, um, Katie Frost, my oldest, went on from singing with, you know, in Micah choruses, and um, then she sang at Wellesley College chorus, and they traveled to Rome, really? and they traveled, yes, Ecuador or something. So she they was traveled well prepared, with. Yeah. The, the concert uh, course from her college because of the all the education she had gotten um, from, from high school. school. That's so awesome. So it's, it's something that can carry uh, through. Um, Darlene loves our FB video. Thank you, Thank Darlene. you. Thank you. Yes. And it's, you know, it's it's great that Hopkinton, that was, I think, why both of us moved to Hopkinton. So our kids had yeah. a lot of arts. I mean, it's important that the education is there. And like you were talking about, music is so important for, that's how humans have communicated for thousands of years, through song and through music. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's such an old, has a lot of history to it as yeah, well. well. I think before, you know, if you look at the churches, mm-hmm. before there were people could read, before they were literate, yeah. there was the stained glass window that told the story. Right. And in the same way that music can evoke feelings and connect you to different you know, meanings, um, whatever it is. It could be a piece that's spiritual. It could be a piece that's happy. It could be, you know, right. fun. Um, you know, and just lighthearted. Right. Uh, so yeah, music is really is another language, and it it it's a 
you know, it's almost like putting color into our world. It does. Math, I don't think of as having a color. Right. You know, but music right. really livens it up. It does. In fact, in our in Elmwood School, they teach the kids math with um, songs. Right. I remember Celia's. Yeah. Sing, yeah. yeah. So, Which is so the, clever because right. it, it makes sense. I I wish I had a greater understanding of a, how to play it myself, but I have a great appreciation for music. Maybe you're a drummer, too. Maybe. Well, maybe. <laughs> yeah. um, the I thing like is, the thing is, is <laughs> you know, I know Alzheimer's patients, because my dad used to sing in nursing homes yes. when he was more active, um, remember respond. songs yes. from their youth and and growing up times even though they don't remember their own family right. so well, there's I used this to place in the head that music resonates with and retains that so i had some serious alzheimer's patients they were bedridden and a lot of times when i took care of them i would sing and i have a horrible yeah, voice yeah, yeah. but they would sing with me Aww. yeah I'd sing christmas songs and right. it would help me be right. able to take care of them because right. it would distract them they wouldn't be so confused or whatever and it's a familiar yeah it, I, it is a it's comforting. a very very good thing i like, wish i was a better singer like a but comfort they, food yeah oh, i don't think they I, I really don't think that's yeah, important it was just the you're tune their memory and and connecting. right and they would sing along with me i had a padre from the greek orthodox church and quite confused from Alzheimer's, very yeah. scared all the time and mm. was afraid. And if we would sing, mm -hmm. his wife and I, when we'd take care of him, he would he would calm, he wouldn't be so yeah, apprehensive. Yeah. Cool. So it was so, nice. So what did Karen Sylvester send? So she sent a bunch of stuff. So she says, so there's some dates. So I mean, the school is putting together um, performances. So there's men's chorus um, performing before Providence Bruins that happened on February 27th. Our high school course? Yeah, so wow. yeah, so which is which was kind of neat. Cool. And then um, this year Mother Nature permitting, there's five evening concerts, which I've been to one and I know one was supposed to be Tuesday, now it's Thursday. Is this all high school or this is Hopkins middle school? I think high it's school? all of it because or maybe not. I mean, let me read further here. So and so it's um, students perform at elementary school meetings, which is interesting. I, it, she oh, yeah, well, that's traditional. I didn't know but that. that. But really, what's more about this March in the school? What are they doing in March? Yeah, so the performance feature, fifth grade ensembles, vertical concert showcasing Hoptington Middle School choruses, orchestras, choruses, and bands, and a concert um, featuring performance ensembles at the high school that will perform in Mass Massachusetts Instrumental That's and Micah. Chorus yes, yeah. Conductors Association Festival. Yeah. So in addition, the HHS Jazz Ensemble will be performing at the Massachusetts Association of Jazz Educators State That's Festival. That's cool. I don't remember that. Which is really before. cool. And then the Jazz Ensemble earned the medal, or excuse me, um, gold medal rating of regional fest Festival, at a regional festival has been invited to state finals on Sunday, March 18th. All right, so which they, is this they weekend. got a gold medal at a local thing, and now they're on yep, the state finals. Yep, so now they're going and to... And that's the jazz? That's the jazz ensemble. Wow. And then April 11th for Jazz Night, so M-I-O-S-M, -S which is that acronym, the... the um, I forget the name of the acronym. It's okay. But it's the state... Probably <laughs> Music at Our Schools Month. Yeah, exactly. That, that's what it is. Excuse me. And then, um, so, remark how well the students and parent volunteers, Hopkinton Music Association, teachers treat the groups that come in. So a lot of people that come into our schools are very grateful for what we what we offer them. So yeah. we offer them yeah. a nice platform. Yeah. The audience is very kind. The volunteers are great. And obviously the teachers and students are great. So it, so part of, I think part of what's valuable. Oh, Andy loves our FB video too. Thanks, Andy. Thank you. Um, <laughs> So part of, I think, what the other piece of what uh, the music department does really well yep. is teach decorum, right. which is behavior, concert behavior, yes. sitting quietly. Yes. You know, it's hard for kids to it sit is. quietly. I'm always Especially with they... all that they do when they're handheld things these days. Right. So they have to sit quietly. They all have to get up at the same time. Yep. They all have to start at the same time. Yep. They have to follow the, the, you know, it's this whole other discipline right. that's so valuable. And, isn't... and it's not in many other parts of... Our lives anymore. Exactly, exactly. Well, we grew up. I think it was more strict like that. But I think that's such a yeah. great tool for kids right. to have that patience and exactly. that composure to to hold themselves that yes, way. Yes, and then the graciousness with which they 
treat other, you know, com competing choruses. Right. You know, it's not. Their it's, sportsmanship. It's a competition. Yep. But it, you know, but but it's a gracious so, competition and very so, supportive. Exactly. Yes. And and you know, sit quietly. Don't rattle your program when the other right. person's performing. Don't get up. Don't walk in while people are singing. Right. Wait at the doorway till there's a break in the music. Well, and even All the of parents those are so good. And the, when I go to these That's concerts, you know, like people are very respectful. They're not taking video with their cell phones. They're not taking exactly. pictures. Right. And one thing they always say is to be present for the music and we're right. so distracted right. by everything all the time I think that's a great thing for all of us because when right. I go I just I yeah. try not to be you know I, yeah. I'm not looking at my phone not yeah. looking at my computer I'm actually present and it's an I think experience it really is yeah. it really is and and she wanted to also say they're um, very appreciative that is a support of the community and the administration gives the music and all the arts in the Hopkinton schools, which is very true. I mean, that's that's one thing I, I love, love about our school system. And without the community's administrative administration's continued support, um, everything they would do would not be possible. So they wanted to make sure that people understood that. And Hopkinton has a long history of supporting music education going back to um, Mr. Joseph Markarian and Mrs. Carol Spangler and Mr. Steve Yavaros. Steve Yavaros was, it has been here for a long time. Has he? Or was here. He just recently retired. Did actually. he? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He was so they wanted to give them thanks. And the biggest support source of support is the Hop Hopkington Music Association. Yeah, of course. So, and, you know, any of you guys just go to these concerts, donate to them, buy the T-shirts, yeah. you know, because that's what what they have and i mean even celia was she's going into high school they dropped off a dress that they had tailored for her ready to go for when she goes for chorus for chorus right. when she goes yep. into high school and yep. band as well right. so and then i thought it was great and just real quick the last paragraph our biggest support of support um, source of support, Hockey Music Association, the HMA board led by Clor um, Clorinda Credo Kersey. Kersey. Oh, Kersey, excuse me. Yep. Helps the music department with scholarships, lesson program, concert uniforms, sponsoring music clinicians to come yeah, she and work raffles. with the students. Yep. Yeah, so I think all of that is to say that our parents really value music for our kids. Yes. Because we know why it makes a difference in their lives and why it's special. Absolutely. And of course, you know, throughout the nation, it's now this special focus on music in our schools month. Right. Because it's music so important is that really special thing I have friends that go have kids in other school districts and they're cutting and taking away their their arts and, and music yeah. programs which yeah. is so sad yeah so but it just you know it's unfortunate because I think it's it's a huge loss yeah so. and I think I really do think that it, there's a piece of the brain that that I think it I think it encourages intelligence absolutely and broadens the mind absolutely instead of just, you know so limited so um, we thank you for watching our first segment. We're going to be back in a couple minutes to talk about scouting today. Why is it still important? And then our third segment, we're going to talk a little bit about school shootings and what can be done. Yep. Thank yeah. you. See you soon. Good, good. Do you find yourself feeling down in winter? Yeah, I wish I had or time to do it. Or do you experience depression every year? Does it get worse colder and darker um, months? So I'm here to tell you about winter depression and what you can do that may be helpful. Seasonal affective disorder, or SAD, is a type of depression that tends to occur in the fall. You may lose your energy and motivation. You may feel sluggish, agitated, distracted, hopeless, and you may have problems with sleeping, your appetite, or suicidal thoughts. SAD can lead to social withdrawal, problems with school or work, and substance abuse. Here's the good news. You can talk with your primary care physician, your psychiatrist, or mental health professional. There are effective treatments such as counseling, light box therapy, or medication. Sometimes we feel bad in the fall and winter anyway, especially during the holidays. But if a mood slump continues for days or weeks, don't wait. Talk with your doctor or counselor for more information and support. A gun? I'm Haley. Hi, my name is Jake. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Al my Gal and we love H-Camp. Hey, I watch TV. Uh, camp. We love H-Camp.
and I volunteer for HCAM TV. And I watch HCAM TV. And I love HCAM TV. And I love HCAM TV. We love HCAM TV. Welcome back. We are now in our second segment of the Margie and Lisa show. We're going to talk about scouting and why is it still relevant today. Um, I know scouting's been around for a long time. Yep. Um, my son went through it from Cub Scouts. I was actually Cub Master nice. and, uh, and Eagle Scout mentor. So you I know why it's important. Background. Yeah. Um, but we're very fortunate to have with us Dan Warren, who's a longtime friend of yours. Yep, and he's the team lead <laughs> for research and evaluation. So, Dan, are you on the line? I am. Hi, Margie. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Hi Dan. Thank you for calling in. Uh, it's our ple my pleasure. So, so give us a little background on um, what you do and what your um, kind of mission is in your position. Ah, okay. Um, so basically, what I do is to, to sum it up. So I'm the um, I'm in charge of research within the the Boy Scouts of America um, at the national level. So technically, my office is in Irving, Texas, but I'm a I'm a Bostonian, and uh, we don't live in Texas. So. Uh, I, worked out, I worked it out so I could stay here in Boston and work remotely and then travel down there. My job is, in essence, to, um, to collect data. Uh, and that, sometimes that's market data. Sometimes that is data about um, different advertising things, uh, different focus groups, uh, branding stuff. It uh, could be pilot, new pilots, all types of stuff. Anytime data is collected, analyzed, and then sent back into the organization, for decision making, then that tends to come through my shop. Interesting. So, so Dan, yeah. the question yeah. that we're um, working on today is um, why is scouting still relevant today? So you may have some data on um, the numbers of scouts that are still involved. I know every time we did an Eagle Scout uh, Court of Honor, and I I'm, was an Eagle Scout mentor and helped 15 scouts get through <laughs> in the five years that I did that to Eagle. Mm. but. Um, so we would read 100 scouts and talk about out of 100, you know, whatever, for every 100 people, I don't know. So there were some really great statistics. Um, I don't know if that's the kind of information you have about why is scouting so important today still. And I guess yeah. what's uh, trending, too, like kind of what do you see on the forefront that people are interested <laughs> in? Go ahead. Sorry, Dan. Sure, yeah. So um, one of the reasons to get to your, your, your 100 scouts thing, uh, I hate to say this, but um, that wasn't accurate. Oh. Um, that was a that was actually a marketing thing that was put out, I think, in the late '70s. Okay. Um, that they took this kind of quick uh, glimpse into things, and some marketing people put that together as kind of a almost a, a reflection of the diversity of scouting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we looked into that, uh, and a lot of what I'm supposed to do is try to get kind of accurate data and talk about, you know, what are the changes that we do see in kids? Great. And, and one of those big things is uh, you'll see it all in the news, right? So all the stuff they're talking about now, when you talk about character, when you talk about resilience, when you talk about grit, when you talk about leadership, when you talk about everything that's really trending in stuff that they're trying to promote in, um, you know, what they're calling soft skills right now in yeah. schools. Social, the emotional county, learning. Yep. Sure, scouting has been doing that for a hundred years. Absolutely, and and so um, and the shame really about scouting is is that specifically the Boy Scouts of America is that for the majority of that time, we've believed that that curriculum couldn't be or shouldn't be accessed by girls, and and that mm -hmm. has and what's been interesting that's happened is that within this with, within the years, um, society has evolved. Um, to the point of where we recognize that those those traits, uh, or I shouldn't say traits, those attributes, um, are are needed by both boys and girls. They're important for families. And so, in the last uh, year, year and a half, we've really made a move to say there's no reason why our curriculum um, shouldn't be accessed by anybody in the population who is willing to to benefit from our curriculum. All right, um, and Girl Scouts actually, and we're talking about both Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, why is scouting in general important? Girl Scouts has been around for 100 years, and um, they do, I was a Girl Scout leader as well, they do focus on um, the similar things to Boy Scouting. They just do it in a different way. 
Um, right. and, you know, so so this flyer that I just got um, from Karen Ehrlich, who is our Girl Scout coordinator in Hopkinton, um, research shows that through the Girl Scout leadership experience, girls develop strong sense of self, display positive values, seek challenges. Um, girl Scouts is where you're a girl, go-getter, innovator, risk-taker, leader, can learn from setbacks, identify, solve problems, and form healthy relationships. You know, mm -hmm. so so they the Girl Scouts, um, you know, not to take away from the Girl Scouts by saying that the Boy Scouts have this great character building um, curriculum, um, Girl Scouts actually have a great program of their own. They just um, approach things in a different way. I know the merit badge, um, the merit badge selection has a little bit more or of a technical, but um, Karen was telling me that the Girl Scouts are actually focusing more on STEM now. So there is, you know, so what I think that? what their STEM is science, technology, engineering, oh, and math. Yep. Um, and they add architecture <clears throat> in there and call it STEAM sometimes. Perfect. So, yeah, so, so Girl Scouting is evolving as well. Good. And I think the question is, you know, um, why are Girl Scouting and Boy Scouting still a relevant, valuable thing? Right. You know, because when I was a kid, I wasn't a Girl Scout. We had... Um, campfire girls but there were days which we would we would wear our uniform to school and not everyone did hmm. you know and I think nowadays um, it's it seems to be fewer kids right. that wear that that do that um, and and you know I I just think it's such an important thing because of the character building right and I didn't take Girl Scouts I went to 4-H in Idaho so I well, mean that's I, another I, set of wonderful it was values. it was interesting because 4-H was integrated yeah. so it was boys and girls together and uh, mostly the 4-H I did was obviously like animal husbandry horses yeah. camping survival but I thought it was interesting I was looking at the national website and you have um, two two programs that seem to be targeted for um, both sexes or anybody and it's um, venturing and exploring is yeah. that correct I don't know if you yeah, want to exp expand on those <laughs> sure it's it's broader than that and let me let me first of all say uh, our, our overall uh, perspective on everything is that we want kids to be involved in programs and that's Absolutely. our ultimate goal right we yeah. want to make sure that kids should have opportunities yep and so yeah. that if that means that we're helping out with getting kids into the Y, into Boys and Girls Clubs, into Girl Scouts, which we believe is a fantastic program, awesome. into 4-H. 4-H, I worked with them for years mm -hmm. uh, when I was at Tufts. Um, these are all amazing programs. And the idea is let's get someone, let's right. get everyone into something. Right. Uh, and if I'm going to give my pitch, like, yes, I'm going to aim for Boy Scouts, right? But that's, that's, that's of course, my bias. But the idea is that let's get people into programs that fit with the values of their family, that fit with the needs of, of their kids, yeah. and then let's go from there and let's all work together on that. So that's our overall thing. That's awesome. But to I love get, that. To get to this, uh, and, and you know, it's interesting to note that, um, like, I get to, I'll get together in a few weeks with the heads of research of all of the large youth serving organizations, and we mm -hmm. share a lot. Um, our CEOs all get together. It's a... Uh, it's more collaborative than, than we would think, uh, than, than people would think. Um, anywho, um, so this idea, though, of, um, you know, uh, the relevancy of scouting. Yeah. It's a fascinating question. You know what people ask me uh, all the time, and it, 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 my friends ask me, they're like, do you know, when does scouting become not cool? And, <laughs> right. and I think it's an awesome question, actually, because... We haven't changed what we do per se. Right. Um, and if we put our, uh, if we put what we do into a survival show on TV. Right. And everybody That's a good idea. <laughs> Let's yeah, do it, that. It was called, yeah, it was called Are You Tougher Than a Scout? And Let's it really, do it. <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't work so great. Oh. Um, oh, you but, did it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, Are You Tougher Than a Boy Scout was, a, was something that was put out as it. a show. But the, but the overall thing here is that I think what we've done is a couple things that have caused that to happen. Is um, I think that we have narrowed our population and our focus over the years, and we've allowed our organization to become a very small, uh, almost boutique organization that was a clubhouse and mm -hmm. we focused on those people who were who scouting was their whole life and we made our program 
so big and so immersive, still great stuff, but we made it so that you couldn't do anything else while you did it, or it was very hard to do that. Oh. And, we, and what we've got to start thinking about is more is how can we have, how can we get people to be involved at the level that they want to be involved in, in, in scouting, right? So sometimes that means um, that, you know, you, you, you know, you attend most of the meetings per year and you may come to summer camp. Sometimes that means that you're going to miss some meetings and, and do it a little bit more intermittently. But the idea is that we have to have this note of you're welcome and we invite you to participate at the level that you wish to participate in. Yeah, and, and I, I love, I, Dan, I love that you said that. I was talking to someone earlier today um, uh, who's actually in our corner office um, <laughs> who was saying that her daughter went through Girl Scouts and got all the way to ambassador level without going for the Bronze Award, Silver Award, Gold Award, because for her it wasn't about the awards, it was about the camping and the experience and, right. and yeah. the adventure. And um, I have to say, my son didn't make e Eagle, probably because I was the Eagle Scout mentor voice and the mother voice saying, did you get that done? Yeah. But um, he had AP classes, a girlfriend, a job, a car. And like you're saying, he just had too many things happening in his yeah. life. And the Eagle Scout project and the, and the paperwork yeah. was a whole nother overwhelming yeah. thing it's um, a lot for the kids because i've sponsored eagle scout projects right. with the trails club with right. barry acres and yeah with the medical reserve corps we've done we've outfitted trailers for our emergency de response and they've they've come and done trains but it's a lot of work for them which is not a bad idea but i think just having like dan said making it more flexible yeah. so they're not so tied into that track right. of what they have to do they have more flexibility because i found that with 4-h yeah. when i went to 4-H, I kind of veered off to horses and camping and, and that. But we got Stephen loves our FB video. Thank yeah, thank you, you Stephen. Stephen. But yeah, and Dan, I think, I think to your point, um, having the kids feel success from their participation level, whatever their participation yeah. level is, would be valuable because I see the kids, you know, see the faces that are like, well, I really want to go for Eagle, but I have this many merit badges to do and I'm, I'm going to turn 18 and it's I'm not sure. And then I think they feel a sense of failure, even yeah. though they've achieved life rank and they've done all the things and they've gone to camp and experienced that whole thing. So I think you're right. I think the intrinsic value of scouting for boys and girls is that experience out in nature and learning the new skills and yep. accomplishing the triads or the merit badges or whatever it is right. they do, um, to me as a leader was exciting to participate right. in with the girls and the boys. Right. Well, and the team building, I mean, team I see building a huge and team the values building and thing. collaboration. And yep, <laughs> and just to read the, um, the scout law, which I know you know, <laughs> trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent, we should all be those things. Right, so <laughs> we can all you learn know? From that. And then the outdoor code is a wonderful thing, being clean in the outdoor manners, careful with fire, considered in the outdoors. You know, and the scout oath. I mean, all these things are, are core values, like you're saying, and so important today right. um, to help kids grow in, in a healthy way, right. um, in my opinion. Well, and I it, think, you know, right, oh, go ahead, Dan, I'm sorry. Sorry, it's, you know, what's interesting is that um, uh, when I, I present to a lot of groups across the country, and it's funny, if you, if you start out the conversation with saying that, listen, why, why are we here? And if you say that we're here so that all kids can have the opportunity to learn and grow in safe and healthy ways. Yes. Yep. And people say, I'm with you. Good. Right. Right. Continue. And you say, and here's, here's how we do it. Here's how the Boy Scouts of America does it. We have these values. Um, we believe that people should do their best. We believe that people should be these words that you just recited. We people we we believe that uh, through um, having these types of qualities and aspiring and holding people accountable to these type of qualities, yeah. we think people become better people. Yeah. And people say, "Oh, well, and you know, well, what are these values?" And you tell them these things that, that we believe in, and people go, "Well, of course, I believe in those." Right. And then you say, "Okay, uh, and here's what we do: we provide." Um, leadership opportunities in challenging outdoor experiences. Would you like to come and would you like to play with us for a few days? And people say, oh, awesome. I'm, I'm willing to give that a shot. But you know what we've always done? We've said, hey, come join scouting for life. 
Um, you have to be in it all, all the time. And you know what it's about? It's about BDs and arrows. Um, and it's about red jackets and khaki. And that's real, and awards and badges. And that's what it's all about. Come join us, people say. Not for me. Right, right, right. So exactly. You know, so it's been interesting. The yeah. other thing that's interesting about it with the eagle, like when you talk about it, yeah. it's, it's this interesting contrast between I know people that never got past, past second class that are some of the most amazing people I've ever known. Exactly. Right. But, on the, but to contrast that, every job interview I've ever been right. in, and this is what I try to tell people, yeah. every interview I've ever been in, <sighs> and I, I have a decent resume, I don't mean to boast, but there's some cool things on there, but people want to talk about my Eagle Scout. Right, right. And I said, He's an I Olympic a medalist, too, by the way. Cool. No, no, I'm not an Olympic. You're overselling me. Yeah. I'm a, I'm sorry. I, You're I'm right, a, and that's what, that's what I try to tell the kids, you know, yeah. that this is not only a, a valuable experience for right. you, but it is something that right. proves to whomever is interviewing you that you have leadership ability. You're able to make a plan and stick to your plan. You're able right. to organize other people. Yeah. You know, you're able to think about your materials. You're able to fundraise. Those are so life many skills, skills Those are come into play skills. in the Eagle Project. And I have to say in the Silver Award, the Gold Award for Girl Scouting. Sure. You know, so these programs are so important. And um, like you're saying, if you come in with the angle of here's here are these cool things we can work with, and you don't come with the angle of you can get these beads and these merit badge things yeah. and stickers right. and toys and you know, it's not about that. It's more about the experience. Yeah. I think you could and, grab them. And building and the those life thing, skills, you know, like those, yeah. those then, real good. And then the other thing is trying to explain to parents, right, what this really is. Right. Yeah. And that is, that's been our real challenge. When yeah. what we're, the focus that we're taking right now is basically that we're saying that, that what, what scouting is, is basically helping parents to work together to help raise each other's children. Right. And yeah. what we do is we provide a curriculum. That's what we do. Yeah. And when and and these parents that working together are are delivering this this program. They're the ones who do this program. What we do is merely provide a curriculum right. that helps people um, get some things to be explicit that might have been more implicit. Right. The other thing that's interesting is you mentioned exploring. So when when people um, say to me, you know, oh, you're an Eagle Scout. What my expectation is not that, that, or their expectation is not, oh, you can light a fire anywhere. Uh, <laughs> you, can tie, you can tie all types of crazy knots, or you have all of these other skills. Yeah. But there's a transferability of, of what they believe that the brand identity of that is, and it transfers over, right, into this value. And they say, you'll be a good leader, you're a good person for our organization. Yes, what exploring absolutely. is, exploring, which is such an, uh, I wish more people understood what exploring our exploring program was exploring is is not that it's actually um, hosted uh, exploring posts are hosted by actual careers like so uh, law enforcement is our biggest exploring so police really? precincts um, actually uh, sponsor an exploring post where they do ride-alongs with them they gain all types of career experience mm -hmm. um, with and they go from 14 until 21 mm -hmm. and they they gain experience in a career so we have business exploring Fabulous. we have uh, awesome. EMS and fire uh, and and these people these kids who go through these programs and they they can transfer right into those fields because wow. They have all of those skills. So That's if I huge. have to convince, if I have to have the transferability of my eagle, they don't even need that. So right. many explorers, police explorers that I grew up with went right into the police department from there. Wow. Um, and but I wish more people knew about that because if we, in these days where you're talking about career readiness and right. job opportunities, it is a pipeline right into the career. Um, right. or, to know, or to know you don't want to be in that career and to steer clear right, right. You know, a little bit earlier. Yeah. You know what, Dan? Wish... We're actually out of time for this segment. I'm sorry <laughs> to say that because you are so right. Yes. And, and I love everything you're saying. Um, keep that energy. You know, keep that focus. Um, let me know if you want me on your team because I'm really passionate <laughs> about scouting. Um, but, yeah, we really Thank appreciate you. your time. And we really appreciate all the information you brought to us. It really taught us Keep all doing about that great a lot scouting about thing. yeah, a lot about <laughs> well, scouting. <laughs> we're just looking to tell our story um, in a way so that people get to know who we are again. That's our awesome. love it. Thank you so awesome. much, Dan. Thanks for the well, time. Well, thank you. Thank you.
and All we'll right, be back. Did you know there are other ways to reduce your pain besides taking medications? For example, mindfulness. I'm Dr. Mike Guidi, a family medicine doctor based in Essex County. I use mindfulness techniques with my own patients during office visits, and I'm here to tell you how you can prevent addiction. It is a way to train your brain to manage pain. Reducing your pain through mindfulness could mean you need less medication or a safer type of medication. It can also help you reduce your stress and recover from past trauma. That means you become less likely to develop an addiction, whether opioids, alcohol, or any other substance. In brain research, we scan people's brains before they start practicing mindfulness, and after they've been practicing it daily for eight weeks. We see actual changes in the way their brains are wired. We see those people drawing more on their judgment and reasoning skills, resulting in safer behaviors. Massachusetts has great resources about effective mindfulness techniques. To find out more, go to massmed.org. This week on um, Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, poets, storytellers, and musicians perform and share their original works. If you flip the back seat forward, you can handle it. Just wait so much to begin. And after the bridge is ready. Now the squirrels in the leafless tree. Welcome back. This is our third segment of the Margie and Lisa show. Yep. And we're going to talk about the school shootings. Um, what can we do about it? Is there anything we can do? Right. And kind of what's going on, to, it's kind of ironic we're talking about this today because of all the school walkouts. Um, 10 a.m. Yeah, 10 a.m. 17 minutes. Yeah, for 17 minutes. And I just, I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but I downloaded the map of show, showing all the school walkouts. Right in um that cnn had kind of posted yeah so i thought that was pretty profound um it was you know there were they i couldn't get an actual number on how many kids walked out i'm sure we'll get the numbers back but yeah. to me i think that's so important for these kids to you know exercise their right to have their voice heard um, and, you know, I grew up in a community that was very gun-oriented, NRA was there, but it seems like something needs to happen, something different needs to happen. I did some research on the history of the NRA. I took their safety class at 11 years old. The NRA was all about safety, and I feel a little bit that they've de deviated from that that mantra that, that they had pushed forward. So I think that what the kids are asking for is really for, you know, stricter gun laws. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, if somebody has a mental illness or has shown, um, you know, have the uh, police report of showing aggression or spousal abuse or anything like that, they shouldn't be able to get a gun, you know, obviously without review. And what's wrong with the waiting period? Why can you just go anywhere and buy a gun? I mean, you can't even buy a car like that. So how do you right. how do you justify mm -hmm. buying a gun like at a show just like that? And right. granted, I grew up in a gun-toting family, and everybody well, but has the, it. But there's a difference between yeah. owning a gun as a rifle for deer hunting yeah. and having a bump stock to kill people. Right. So I or think the NRA, you know, the Second Amendment right to carry yes. a gun, possess a gun, is a different thing from um, what we have now. Yeah. Uh, I know I have a couple of things I wrote yes. down. Um, today, hundreds marched from... St. Paul's Church in Boston to the State House because yes. there was no school in Boston. Right. So the kids marched. Um, they're supporting a bill to remove guns from people who right. shouldn't have them, right. clearly. There's going to be a bigger rally on uh, March 24th. Yep. And then um, a lot of it is hashtag enough is their sort of right. tweeting thing. And they f spelled out in... Um, in Gr Grenada Hills Charter School, yep. they spilled out hashtag enough on the football field. I saw that. As part of their yeah. walkout. Um, and then, you know, people, I guess um, our April 20th is the 19th anniversary of the Columbine yes. High School. Yes. And, and again, 10 a.m. on April 20th, leaving school for the day. So this is really well, the, the, the issue of our time. Yeah. You know, back in the 60s, it was 
the Vietnam War and protesting right. this undeclared war. This right. is another issue that high school students look at and see our parents, our adults are not doing a good right. job with this. They're not protecting us. Jim says a student from HHS TV took footage yep. at the HHS walkout today and it will be on there. Um, I their, took it too because I happened to be dropping something off for Celia on their HSS T Today news show. Excellent. I know Alan Keller yep. put out a letter yep. for the for the middle oh, school. Saying, I liked how they handled that. Beautiful. I, I Beautiful. thought they like the the middle school sent out a letter, and they said, you know, it's students have the choice. The classes will go on as scheduled, but we have an assembly area. You know, we're going to have people monitoring, but kids yeah. can choose to stay within yeah. class or choose kids can choose to walk. So it was a very supportive so environment. So they honored they honored the the right of the students to protest absolutely peacefully, right? Obviously. But it handled quite it was handled yeah. quite diplomatically. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I thought, and that's I mean that's. It's probably a good example of how we should be looking at this as a country. I mean, it's so right and left, and it, you know, it, for me, it's it's a, a child's life. My God, I mean, children's see, lives. I, I don't see it as right and left. I see it yeah. as central yeah. because it is a child's life. Yeah, I and, mean, and I mean, if it's their child, I have friends yeah. that love guns and shoot guns, and if it was their kid, I, I would think it would be a different. But they're not shooting guns at people. No, see, that's not. what I'm saying. That's the difference. No, I know, so, but people that support, you know. But there's a difference between a right to carry a gun for yep. self protection yep. and giving a a gun to a. 17 year old right who shouldn't have a gun because they he's exhibited signs. mental yeah. illness so this was talking about um the 11 school shooting of 2018 yeah in park parkland it's only march yes it's only three months 11 and we've had 11 school shootings yep. in the days that followed there were three more school shootings yep. in louisiana and uh, ohio and florida you know and and the question comes why is this happening now? Right. Is it because of things like modern warfare where the students, you know, kids are, this is entertaining to shoot people and how many people right. can I kill? Right. You know, where is it coming from? Well, and accessibility. Um, I mean, I think it's not just as easy as just the guns. I think it's, there's yeah. accessibility Online to guns. Ordering. I think it's isolation. Yeah. There'll be, you right. know, mental health disorders. There's, you know, parents need to have some accountability to know what their kids right. are doing. It's more hands-off yeah, You know what I mean? And and there, yeah. I think there's a lot of factors that of need course. to, and it's very complex, but yep. I mean, you look at anything else, I mean, more kids are getting killed by this yeah. than, than a lot of things in, in the world. So, I mean, to me, it, it seems like it should be forefront mm -hmm. and something that people are, we study everything else, let's make this, well, let's that, and not send our thoughts and that's prayers, the other thing let's I was make say some is changes. In, in the, I know in the schools in Hopkinton, yep. social emotional learning is a big focus right yes. now. Now. So it's part of the curriculum in all the schools, social emotional learning. It comes through the wellness department. Yeah. Um, you know, and so that is part of. Um, well, I have an article here um, from February 26th, um, a parenting article about how can we stop gun violence, yeah. school violence. Sorry. What um, was but I just want to say, Sam. Well, there's a lot here. Yeah. Go but ahead. Sam, I just want to interject. Sam says many colleges are not going to punish applicants that have quote yep. unexcused absences unquote on their record for these protests. And yep. actually, I would venture to say that colleges right. may actually uh, view a person who is willing to step up for a belief right. and protest and make a statement very favorably because as Dan Warren was talking about, that's yeah. the person showing leadership. Right. They're not just taking off a school to go to Dunkin' Donuts. I asked she did it, and I was proud that she did. She yeah. didn't tell me right away, but I, I was proud as a mother that yeah. she stood up for it because she's by the book. She follows the rules yes and for her to leave class and there may have been a she, lot of kids that left class too. right it may have been but for group. her to leave class that's a big deal for yeah. her you so know? this article um is talking about and it's actually well um gun the nonprofit gun violence archive defines the school shooting as an incident that occurs on a school campus during school or extracurricular hours resulting from death or injury from gunfire. Before the 14 school shootings thus far in 2018, there were 75 shootings in 2017, 80 in 2016, 55 in 2015. So clearly it's increasing. Yes. Although I don't know, 75 in 2017 and 16, Still pretty similar. Ridiculous. But you know, it shouldn't be any, it should be maybe two. It's ridiculous. Um, but it's talking about American Psychological Association's guidelines um, 
there are there are, there are resources. So that's uh, APA is American Psychological Association dot org slash topics slash violence slash school dash shooting. Yep. How to communicate and support with kids. New York Times has a list of resources for parents and teachers. Scholastic has a guide for teachers and parents on talking to kids about tragedy. Um, but bottom line, the schools are the safest place for children. Yes. So children shouldn't feel unsafe right. going to school. And for me, that jumps right to arming student arming teachers yeah bad idea yeah because then you're well, saying you heard about that the guy that was a oh, experienced yeah. gun owner he disarmed i handle guns and i wouldn't want to have one in a school I, it shouldn't be, and that's you know and, and, and that's so hard to handle it safely no you know what i mean if you have it locked up are you going to actually have time no, i think that's not, a ridiculous a bad idea and that's a horrible thing to ask teachers to well it, do. But see, I mean, even if if i mean again Everything I've heard uh, about having a weapon is that it could be used against you. Sure. So it's just a bad idea, and I think it scares the children more sure. to think that they should have to have a gun in the well, school to protect themselves. Well, you may have themselves. accidents in the school, exactly. too. I mean, but that's the other thing why is you lock up your the, guns the in your home. The school resource officer yep. is normally present. You know, I know we yep. have Officer Phil yep. with a gun yep. at the school yep. as a school resource officer to be there in case of a problem. Right. That's the person who should have the gun, right. not the teacher who's supposed no. to be nurturing and teaching and guiding and leading and that's an calming. that's a ridiculous so then idea. <laughs> so if it's understandable if you or your child feels that schools are unsafe after a shooting it's statistically much safer in school then it unfortunately says children are far more likely to be shot in a home a store a street a parking lot shopping center restaurant than a school so it's an overall gun yep. issue. Vital statistics yeah. uh, show that we have 300 shootings every day in the United States where someone is killed or wounded, but far less than 1% in the schools. We have a gun violence problem, not a school violence yeah. problem, is his yeah. quote, which I loved. Um, and then the percentage of, this is from latest crime and safety report, school crime and safety. Yep. Percentage of students who reported being afraid fell from 12% in 95 to 3% hmm. in 15. Percentage I mean, school security has gone up it's exponentially much more, since, it's much more since Columbine. It changed. I mean, right. school doors and that used was to 19 be open. Years ago. Yeah, exactly. so I mean, the school security, absolutely. Right. I mean, any of us that drop off anything right. to our kids' school, it's very secure. Exactly. Which is a good thing. Yep. You know? And then students, grades 9 to 12, who reported carrying a weapon fell from 12% in 93 to 4%. Right. Na you know, now. Um, as of 2015, school-related violence had not increased over 20 years. Yep. So something's happening now. What schools are doing, um, in 2012, um, everyone responded to the Newtown, Connecticut thing with an emphasis on school security. I know our school now, yep. we have a key fob. We have, an, we have a little, sort of a little lock. Yep. You, come, you come in one yep. thing, and then you can come in the second Middle one. Middle schools like Two that, Two yep. door entrances, right. Yep. So they really, and we've been drilled on lockdown procedures. Um, so, so this is saying we should place more emphasis on preventing shootings rather than preparing for them. Agreed. And that goes to social emotional learning. Yep. During school shootings, even when we're able to keep children from being harmed physically, the psychological harm is enormous. Yeah. You know, post-traumatic stress. Absolutely. All yep. of that, if students are in that area, once that violence happens, they've already been harmed right. psychologically. Well, and even seeing it on TV, you get harmed. I mean, there is Absolutely. there is an emotional response to seeing that. I mean, I know I'm, you know, feeling it very strongly as Me I too. see this on the television, and it, it's affecting our whole country. And it just right. it just feels, you know, I, I feel like Congress, <laughs> instead of focusing on certain things like tax mm. breaks, maybe mm. this this is a high priority exactly that, that and needs to be taken. Fortunately, care of. it is happening in the schools yeah. to be a more of a priority. Cornell and England are both the people quoted here. Um, recommend schools and communities pursue programs focused on students' mental wellness. Yep. The Virginia Threat Assessment Program is one thing that's um, encouraging people to keep schools safe yep. while addressing underlying issues and helping troubled students. Sure. Not to blame the shooter, right. but you know the school should have noticed right. and people should have should said, have this kid has something yeah. going on. In Utah, a statewide crisis tip line is accessible through an app that access confidential means. Right. 
right. of reporting. Well, and I think that bounces off a little bit, and um, excuse me for jumping back a That's little good. bit, but, but with mental health access, mental health care access has been pulled back so much. And it, it, the funding's not there for it, but we need to, says. you know, like yeah. that's something we need to look at because right. these folks are, these these pe kids that are doing this, most of them are crying for help. They're identified yeah. already. Yeah, they're right. already identified. They've showed indications yep. and they should yep. be in some sort of treatment. And yep. whether the school needs the power to do it or right. doctors or family members or right. the police department, and there needs to be some authority. And that's this is saying that there's limited resources yeah. that we need to seek more money into prevention, uh, preventing violence by uh, staffing schools adequately with mental health support staff yep. um, you know and then again here's another person in Manhattan multi-pronged approach is best no yep. tolerance for serious infractions a young yep. person needs to know how to use social response to a difficult situation rather than aggressive response yep. um, you know skills. and I think yeah. that gets role models from the top yeah if you have a person using aggressive language yep. in a in a political situation yep. that's role modeling oh it's okay to swear and put people down it's right. not okay right. Cornell cautions um, against increased gun presence arming our teachers is unreasonable and practical and dangerous yeah um, you know we'd better uh, improve the prevention services then he suggests not to have detention and suspension yeah. but rather Means of support don't right. you know address the root cause well, and of those why kids the kid is that, acting out. I mean, out. think about the kids when we were in school that right. were in detention, had family problems, yeah, or, you, yeah. or whatever. So Absolutely. that's that's an indication for us to step in, right. and not that we're doing parenting, but sometimes society has to step in, right? And and take care of these Absolutely. folks take and, and yeah, take some responsibility. So this is the United U.S. Department of Education report safeguarding our children says three a safe school three components school-wide foundation for well-being and success of all students system for identifying students with acute behavior problems yeah and a system for providing interventions and therapies for at-risk students so these things are all really important um, and then some of the warning signs difficulty eating or sleeping abuse of animals unusual attraction yes. to violence yep. withdrawal from social interaction feelings of rejection or persecution unusually intense or frequent violent contact in writings or art, pattern of bullying, intolerance or prejudice against yep. certain people, drug or alcohol abuse, membership in the gang, threats of violence, physical fighting, all of these things are things we know. And um, there are things that we can do. If you know a kid who's fighting, right. destroying property, intensely angry, showing violence, possessing weapons, threatening suicide, right. that's a kid that needs an intervention. Right. Immediately. Right. And I think this is a broader problem than just guns. Right. You know, and I think as a society, we need to kind of look at those and, and pay attention. Right. Pay attention in school, pay right. attention with friends and neighbors and, and pay attention not to... A gun, it's not a school violence problem, it's a gun problem right. but it's and also mental uh, health and behavior pay attention yeah. if you see something say something yep let's take care of these kids yep that's the end of that's our segment that's all we have time for today see you next week